Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonso. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 5th of August. Indian Prime Minister Modi lays foundation stone at Ram Temple site in Ayodhya. Sri Lankans vote for new parliament amid COVID-19 pandemic. And millions displaced in Bangladesh as monsoon floods continue. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday laid a 40 kg silver brick to mark the foundation ceremony of Ram Temple in northern Ayodhya city after participating in a groundbreaking ritual attended mostly by spiritual leaders. Describing the ceremony as historic, Modi said the Ram Temple will become a modern symbol of India's traditions, devotion and national sentiment. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday offered prayers and laid the foundation stone for a grand temple at the site believed to be the birthplace of Hindu Lord Ram in Ayodhya city of Northern Uttar Pradesh state. Modi, whose Hindu nationalist Bharti Janta Party campaigned for more than three decades for Ram temple, unveiled a plague at the site in an elaborate ceremony to inaugurate construction. Prime Minister Modi said the Ram Temple will become a modern symbol of India's traditions, devotion and national sentiment. Sri Ram ka mandir hamari sanskriti ka adhunik pratik banega aur mein jaan bujh kar ke adhunik shabd ka prayog kar raha hu. Hamari Saswat Astha ka Pratik Banega Hamari Rashtriya Bhavana ka Pratik Banega Arya Mandir Karodo Karod Logoki Samohit Sankal Prasakti ka Bhi Pratik Banega the Supreme Court ruled last year that Hindus who believe the site in Ayodhya is the birthplace of Lord Ram be allowed to build a temple there, ending years of litigation. The Muslim community has been given a five-acre plot at another location to build a new mosque to make up for the 500-year-old Babri Masjid demolished by a mob in 1992. As India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory marked the first anniversary of revocation of its special status, curfew like restrictions mainly to contain the COVID-19 pandemic remained enforced in Kashmir Valley on Wednesday. Security forces were also deployed in strength across the valley as authorities feared unrest by Pakistan-sponsored groups on the occasion. Curfew-like restrictions mainly to contain the COVID-19 pandemic remained enforced in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday as it marked the first anniversary of revocation of its special status. Police and Central Reserve Police Force personnel were also deployed in strength across the Kashmir Valley, especially Srinagar city, as authorities feared unrest by Pakistan-sponsored groups on the occasion. Indian government on August 5 last year had announced the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A in the parliament, which resulted in the bifurcation of the state of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Earlier on Tuesday, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan unveiled a new map of his country, which showed the entire region of Jammu and Kashmir as its territory. India reacting to the move termed Islamabad's map an exercise in political absurdity. New Delhi also slammed the country for its malafide intentions and said it confirms the reality of Pakistan's obsession with territorial aggrandizement supported by cross-border terrorism. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Polling for the 2020 parliamentary election twice delayed by the COVID-19 pandemic, 
commenced in Sri Lanka on Wednesday morning under strict health guidelines. Sri Lankans shrugged off fears of the novel coronavirus and exercised their franchise to elect a new parliament that President Gotabaya Rajpaksa hopes will clear the way for him to boost his powers. Sri Lankans shrugged off fears of the novel coronavirus and lined up before polling stations on Wednesday wearing masks and social distancing to elect a new parliament that President Kotabaya Rajapaksa hopes will clear the way for him to boost his powers. Polls opened at 7 a.m. local time and were scheduled to close at around 5 p.m. Health officers, including public health inspectors, were deployed at polling stations to ensure strict adherence to the health safety measures. Sri Lankans cast their ballot to elect 196 lawmakers to the 225-member parliament. The other 29 will be elected from a national list according to the number of votes received by the respective parties or independent groups. A total of 7,452 candidates from 40 recognized political parties and 313 independent groups are contesting the general elections this year. <laughs> President Rajapaksa is seeking a two-thirds majority for his party in the 225-member parliament to enable constitutional reforms to make the presidency more powerful so he can implement his economic and national security agenda. He is hoping to install his older brother, who is also a former president, Mahinda Rajapaksa, as prime minister. Votes are to be counted on Thursday and the results should be known that day. Moving on, all free Tajir Itihad Association, a traders association in Pakistan's Karachi city, has blamed the country's incompetent government for causing huge losses to businessmen during the lockdowns imposed to curb the spread of COVID-19. President of Pakistan's All Free Tajir Itihad Association, Sharjil Nabnani, had said the country's incompetent government has caused huge losses to businessmen in Karachi during the past lockdowns imposed to curb the coronavirus spread. Labnani said his traders' association had demanded soft loans, citing the financial crisis from the state as well as the federal government, but the authorities turning blind eye to the matter did not respond. Pakistan was put under a nationwide lockdown until May 9, which was initiated on April 1 and later extended twice. Upon its end, the lockdown was eased in phases. Parts of the country are still observing smart lockdowns with some relaxations. We are a poor country. We have a lot of people in our country. We have to do this so that the government gives us extraordinary facilities. लेकिन जो हमारा जाय सकता हुकूमत ने वो भी नहीं दिया हमने हुकूमत सिंध से और हुकूमत फेडरल गवर्नमेंट से हमने 12 दफा लेटर लिखे इसके बाद हमारी जो नेगोशिएशन हुई चीफ मिनिस्टर साहब से उसमें मेरी जो बात हुई थी जिसमें तमाम ताजी तंजी में वहां मौजूद थी इस वक्त कराची शहर की उसमें हमने ये रिक्वेस्ट की थी कि आप हमें किसी तरीके से हुकूमत से लोन दिलवा दें सॉफ्ट लोन और विदाउट इंटरेस्ट लेकिन हुकूमत ने हमारी बात नहीं मानी Pakistan has been one of the worst affected countries by COVID-19 with the economic disruption caused by the pandemic adding to an already existing crisis. The country has so far confirmed 281,136 coronavirus cases with 6,014 associated deaths. In news from Afghanistan, despite continued violence in Afghanistan, U.S. President Donald Trump has said the U.S. military will draw down from between 4,000 and 5,000 troops in the country by November this year in an interview with Axios on HBO. His remarks came as the Afghan Taliban has said its chief peace negotiator in a video meeting on Monday with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo discussed the state of Afghan peace process. 
U.S. President Donald Trump said the U.S. military presence in Afghanistan will be reduced to anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 troops very soon in an interview with Axios on HBO aired on Tuesday. However, he did not specify any exact times. Trump's remarks came as the Afghan Taliban has said its chief peace negotiator in a video meeting on Monday with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo discussed the state of Afghan peace process. Soon after the U.S. Taliban agreement signed on February 29, the U.S. military began a gradual drawdown to close the 19-year-old Afghan war, America's longest. The United States has since reduced the number of its troops to 8,600 from around 13,000 and vacated five Afghan military bases. The agreement also called for the Afghan government to free 5,000 Taliban prisoners in return for Taliban's release of up to 1,000 government detainees. The Afghan government has freed around 4,600 Taliban prisoners in accordance with a list provided by the Taliban, but has balked at releasing remaining 400 prisoners on the list, saying these detainees have committed serious crimes. President Ashraf Ghani's government is convening a consultative Loya Jirga, the Grand Assembly of Afghan Elders and Representatives, to find a consensus on the decision to release these prisoners. In news from Bangladesh, Several countries across South Asia are currently facing a natural crisis as devastating monsoons continue to displace millions and flood large regions. Several flooding continued in parts of Bangladesh on Tuesday with millions displaced. Severe flooding continued in parts of Bangladesh on Tuesday with millions displaced. In the Siraj Dikhan district, about 25 miles from capital Dhaka, Many houses near the Dalishwar River Bank have been washed away due to rising water levels and erosion of the bank, leaving occupants with piles of rubble. The annual rainy season brought more misery with at least 135 people killed in Bangladesh since late June in the longest running floods there in more than two decades. <laughs> A recent comparison of satellite images by U.S. space agency NASA has shown the scale of flooding that were recorded over more than a month between June 2nd and July 25. Almost a quarter of Bangladesh's landmass has been inundated by monsoon-related floods since early July of this year. The country is already suffering due to the coronavirus pandemic. As on Wednesday, Bangladesh's COVID-19 cases rose to 244,000 and deaths from the virus increased to 3,234. Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli lashed out at his party members on Tuesday for demanding a 450-membered Central Committee meeting despite restriction to hold large-scale gathering amid COVID-19 pandemic. Lately, Oli has been facing a hard time to save his chair as demand for his resignation within the party has been rising. Nepali Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli has lashed out at his party members for demanding a 450-member Central Committee meeting despite restriction to hold large-scale gatherings amid coronavirus pandemic. Oli on Tuesday while criticizing the opposing party insiders who have been demanding his resignation and attempting to oust him by calling Central Committee meeting, called the party members irresponsible. The Prime Minister made the remarks on Tuesday during a meeting with health experts and political leaders held to discuss further steps needed to curb the coronavirus spread in the country. <laughs> With the demand of his resignation has been rising within his NCP party, PM Oli has been facing a hard time to save his chair. Various leaders, including co-chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal, have come forward with demands to call 450-member Central Committee meeting to decide over the fate of PM Oli. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.